What's up, guys, and welcome to a special Shifty Crab podcast. Today, it's just the two of us. It's me and Terry. How are you doing, Terry? I'm good. I'm good. This is a little bit weird, isn't it? Just, uh... I know, yeah, just the two of us for a podcast. Just the two of us. That's the, oh, I think that is one of those songs that is, is instantly, when someone says just the two of us, you go there straight away. Yeah, but like, what, ver- like... what, what version are you going to? Are you going for the original? Are you going for the Will Smith and... And uh, oh, Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. I, well, it was. I think it was just him singing it, but it's singing about his firstborn, which would have been Jay. No, who's Jay? the first? No, Jay? he has he has a child older than Jaden. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. This is like limelight, is he? we're talking like the kind of Big Willie style kind of uh, era. That was like nineteen ninety. No, I'm about the original. Yeah, yeah. Good it's album. the original that goes in my head. Oh, okay, I, I think fair yeah. enough. Both Who good. Did the original. I don't know. See. No. There you go. That sums great it up. start to this. Uh, great start to this podcast. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it is the two of us, and I thought this would be a great chance because we're, you know, shifty crowd. But we know to have a bit of a one-on-one and to have a bit of a this is your life interview with you today, Terry. Like with you, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're going to let the audience get to know who you are as a real person. Oh no! Behind all the puns. Right. <laughs> behind, the, the real behind every Terry. pun there's a there's a horrible story but we do have to uh kick it off as we always do with what have you been playing if you've been playing anything this week well we still we're still gonna do this so uh what yeah, have you been yeah. Playing? so yeah i've i've been playing a little bit more uh horizon zero dawn mm-hmm. and yeah i feel like i'm i've really for the first time really got my teeth sunk into that game now i've got about yeah. I think story-wise, I think I've got less than I've got somewhere between five to ten um, kind of missions left, um, and yeah, I've probably got about sixty-five percent of the map opened up. So oh, I, I still can't get over how big that game is, um, like the map and everything. It's just so much to do, so many um, tags on that map. I had to actually turn some of them off because it was overwhelming. I was just like, "This yeah. is too much information going on here." Um, but yeah, that's that's a good game. That's a good game, right? It's, uh, it's a good it's, game. Yeah, I I still so story wise, and I won't go too deep into the story because obviously if uh, people haven't played it yet, but I'm literally on the verge of finding out exactly what Zero Dawn is. What, oh, like, you know what I mean? So okay, so, okay. I, so I don't know, and and I'm 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 waiting for some bomb, not not literally, but like what like something to drop that's going to shock me because I feel like. I don't know what I'm expecting like because I feel like from what everything that's been described so far in the audio logs and just what I'm seeing, I can see what's happened. So I don't know what this, I, maybe there's not a shock. I don't know, but I, I feel like when, every, when it came out, everyone was speaking about, Oh, like, yeah, like there's like a twist or like, I don't know what, I can't foresee what that could be. Like from what I've just seen, it's just like, yeah, obviously it's in the future machines, took over right? and then we did something i'm thinking something similar to like matrix style to take them out and it wiped everyone out in the process i don't know but yeah i mean i'm really enjoying it so I'm, I'm nearing the end of the story but i've got tons of um side quests to do so i think i'm going to kind of pull back now do a lot of side quests because i realized we got to the point where i'm a little bit under leveled where i should be so um so i'm gonna up. yeah so i need to yeah stock up beef up do that kind of stuff do a lot of the um, side quests for the different tribes and stuff, but I'm really enjoying it. I mean, some of the the locales in it, the scenery um, are just stunning. Um, it, it's just, yeah, I mean, just for a 2017 game, it, it still mm-hmm. it looks. There's moments in this just look absolutely like gorgeous. But I also noticed, and I don't know if it's because I'm playing this on a PlayStation Five. There's um, a few like technical hiccups and. Again, might be just how the game was, but certain things like um, when you transition into like a new area, like I know going like from somewhere underground to to the surface, the light doesn't like there's no dynamic lighting. All of a sudden, it's a bit delayed, and it's like someone turns the light switch on, and it's just like all the lights. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, and just like moments like when you're talking to the characters, um, there's a, it's a bit. It doesn't seamlessly flow from like gameplay into talking to them it's a bit jarring like 
Mm. You get, you know, when you get a bit that those moments where it cuts to the conversation and it's like the character models have just kind of just been dropped into the scenery and their hair just starts going like that. Like <laughs> you just go over the place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. um, little things like that. And again, that may be, I don't know, something like um, that patch will clear up. Maybe that's just the way it was in that state. I don't know. But um so yeah, it I mean, was like not, that on PS4. Yeah, so and it's, it, it's not the PS5. It's not perfect. So you would, you would hope, and the facial animation again, like you know, it, it's not perfect. And I'm hoping, obviously, in in the the next one, these are all going to be the things that they would have worked on and polished up and stuff like that. But no, other than that, I'm I'm still really impressed with it. I'm going to crack on with it. I don't know if I'll be able to finish the story by next week because i'll be focusing on the I, I like to clear up all the side quests first mm-hmm. before I, that's what i'm going to do i think do the side quest finish the story and then go and, and try and get everything and i do feel like i will try to get everything on this game maybe go for the platinum we'll see how we go uh we'll see Not how we go because because it is one of those games it's like it's not hard to it's just you know everything's easily on the map is way pointed out for you it's just a case of just going and doing it um it's just wherever i have the patience actually go through and see all that through but um but no really enjoy my time of it um and you you've been replaying through yeah yeah this, I, to be honest i haven't in the last week haven't really touched it um because it's just been me so um but yeah we st- we started playing it for, again and i i love the game um mm. Um, you, the technical problems are there, yeah. but they can only improve on them, you know. So I presume on the next game, it's going to be a lot smoother. It's obviously going to look incredible. Um, yeah, that's what they did in 2017. Like, imagine yeah, what exactly. they can do on the uh, yeah. on the PS5 at its full potential. Uh, yeah, you again, yeah. Stick with it. Stick with it. I would level. I'd definitely level. Beef up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got some good story beats coming. So I'm really just, enjoying. Just enjoy like, it. Yeah. The, yeah, the story and and just going through the all aud- the audio logs and the text logs and stuff. And I love stuff like that in like environmental like storytelling and um, yeah, there's so much there though. <laughs> so much to un- un- a lot. uncover. But no, it's good. Are you enjoying? Have you been doing the hunting grounds? um no i haven't so like that those are those are optional right is that when you get the new weapons and you can yeah you get new weapons and free stuff but they're really really helpful yeah like really helpful uh and you do there's if you do all of them something really helpful okay so um, i would i I would maybe go back and yeah because i do find i struggle um with the battles like with the mm. as soon as i've got a, more than a few enemies wow like it's um yeah that game i'm using a lot of way, I think, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah yeah like right. it's just hard to like keep moving and try and you know attack them and it always feels like my arrows are just not doing enough damage that might be just due to me like not being leveled enough and not maybe putting those um you know, putting the, the points into those perks and maybe I just need a bit more damage and stuff, but it feels like I'm taking forever um, to take, especially like bosses and stuff like that, like just trying to chip down their, their health. I, I, as I'm playing, I'm thinking, am I doing something wrong here? Should I like be like um, taking these down a little bit easier? But I don't know. I'm playing, I think I'm playing on normal difficulty. So yeah, I think the game's difficult anyway. It's not an easy game. And mm. I know there is a game that you have to utilize, like trip casters and yeah, uh, the rope casters and stuff like that. You have and the slingshots. You have to really uh, use them, and mm. your armor is really important. Leveling up your armor. Mm. Um, but yeah, just enjoy it. Yeah. Don't rush it. Um, and yeah, just get those side quests done. There's some mm. really good side quests as well. I think there's some really good ones in there. But um, there's obviously some generic ones as well. No. Is that everything you've been playing? That's it. That's it. Yeah, just been on that. What about you? Uh, I'm still on my Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, you know, I'm still just uh, enjoying my time there. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, doing it slowly. You know, I think the first time I played it, I think I was just rushing through the main 
my uh, the main missions list and trying to do all of the side missions, trying to upgrade the base as much as possible at the moment. I'm currently getting animals for my... Uh, mm-hmm, my yeah. It's such a, like this game is so like Hideo Kojima, like it's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm just currently doing all the stuff in Africa at the moment. I'm I'm there, so um, yeah, I'm loving it. The, you forget sometimes if you haven't played a Metal Gear Solid game in a while, you forget how quirky Metal Gear Solid can be in the cutscenes and stuff like that. So, yeah. Like. Especially like with Quiet, for example, like the cutscenes of Quiet are just, just not great. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's not it's not brilliant. It doesn't reflect well. Uh, I mean, even yeah. at, at the time, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know. But hey, Kojima's yeah, gonna like, Kojima. Yeah, no, it's just be like, okay, well, she mm. doesn't need to be in a bikini continuously. You she know, she breathes like, through her skin, Adam. How else can she? Um, uh, Oh, yeah. Can she stay alive? Come on. Oh, yeah. So working my way through that anyway. So I'm obviously two day, well, three days away, two days when you're watching this. Um, Mass Effect. Yeah. So Mass, like, I'm just biding my time. As soon as that's out, Metal Gear is going to take a backseat for a little while, I think. So you're be... going to just like work your way through the whole trilogy, are you? Hopefully, I think I'm going to try and platinum it, I think. There's three platinums. So I'm going to look at the list because I can't remember the list at all and uh, try and uh, platinum at least one of them. Probably mm. probably the second one because I really like the second game. Uh, and see. But it's just, I know you haven't played through the Mass Effect. Did you, have you played any of them or none no, of them? No, I, I um, played through I, not even half of the first one. Um, mm. And I just couldn't, I loved the idea of the story and the setting. Yeah. I just couldn't get on with the um, the, the, the battles, the combat system, yeah, it's and the check the, the checkpoints. So I remember back then were just a nightmare. Like oh, I'd yeah, get so reason. far, and then I'd get killed, and then I'd like start half level back, and I was just like, oh, do you know what? And I just gave up at that point. Then when two came out, I saw all the rave reviews and stuff, and I ended up buying that on Steam, and I started playing the beginning. I was like, okay, this is this actually feels awesome to play. But I didn't end up carrying on playing through it because I thought I really want to go back and play one, even though they did at the beginning of two, they did that kind of th- recap yeah. thing where you can make your choices. And then, yeah, three, I've not played any of. Um, but it's always, always, as I said to you before, it's always those games. I'm like, I will get to playing those one day because, yeah, yeah they are definitely just right up my street. But it's good that they're getting re- re- they've been remade and remastered so they're there for you mm. when maybe a couple of years down the line when there's a bit of a drought in games you've got a bit more free time yeah, yeah you know absolutely. you can download them and just put sinky teeth into them over some time mm. but yeah but i tell you what, i know we've spoke about it um on what did we speak about maybe the podcast yeah the podcast i finally watched uh tenet oh yeah 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 because it's on sky now so, so I, I watched I, it too yeah, over the weekend yeah yeah, I watched it the weekend, and I thought, all right, I'll give this a go. And <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> 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 it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's a lot. I, like I knew that it was going to be a mind fuck because yeah. one, it's Nolan, and that's it's what he does. Nolan yeah. just completely unhinged and just yeah, yeah. There's a first of all, I thought um, some of the action was really good in it. Um, uh, Washington's incredible in it. I think he's yeah. a really good actor. Um, so I and Robert Pattinson as well. I think Robert quite Pattinson is really good in it as well. Yeah, um, you can you can see from that kind of gives you promise for his Batman as well. Yeah, I've seen him playing a, a bit of a different did, character. Did you see what I said as well about the 007 vibes? Oh yeah, yeah. The suits, definitely. the bit in the boat. And like just yeah. the scenery, like just like wow, okay, like you imagine he'd be actually yeah. directed that. Oh, but it does fall into a lot of the Nolan like traps. This the sound mixing in this is sound horrendous. Terrible. Like I had to it's put horrendous. I watched yeah. it um, with my wife, and yeah, she hadn't seen it before, and mm-hmm. I've been waiting for her to watch it. And I was, um, we had to put subtitles on because there's yeah. just no way you just like it's, you can't hear them. I mean, I saw it at the cinema and. I remember just being, it was 
like almost so loud like your mm. ears are almost bleeding like the gunshots yeah. and stuff like that because watch it was um in uh, IMAX. imax and um yeah. but i couldn't hear hardly any especially the beginning bit the dialogue with the masks yeah. and stuff i was just like it's ridiculous saying? can't hear him and it's not even that the di- the dialogue's so like strange like even if you mm. could hear the dialogue yeah it's hard to even follow what they're saying yeah. like you know what i mean it's just like so like like what but um but you're right though. Yeah, the action scenes are so like I mean they're, they're so yeah. different. You haven't seen anything like oh, that yeah. before. Like it's jarring. It's jarring some of the action scenes. Yeah. Like um because obviously of the way it's designed. Um like really, really good. I think they rushed the beginning of it a little yeah. bit. It seemed very quick to get to the whole crux of Tenet. Yeah, like, I agree, you know, yeah. like yeah. Th- like and the other thing I'll say is like Obviously, not bit for bit, but the big story beats were very predictable. I thought. Mm. I thought they were very predictable. Like, um, are you talking about the um, so the fight, the fight scene in the, uh, the yeah the fight the scene vault? in the yeah in the vault okay. uh, was predictable. Like what had happened. I see. I, I hadn't. I had, when I watched the first time, I, I hadn't. So when we saw that like, for the second time, I was like, yeah. holy! That was a moment. That blew yeah. my mind. The bit going no. up, like the bit going under the yeah yeah from the explosion. The, the, yeah, that was yeah, like yeah. whoa. Yeah, so I found like that bit. I worked out the uh, kind of brand of the reason why he keeps looking at his Fitbit. Yeah, like worked that out. Uh, really? Well, okay. And that Patterson was the backpack worked that out <laughs> like, yeah, like that, yeah. that's the uh, uh to go into but did, yeah did to... you like did you fully like understand the end because when i first watched it the the whole end battle yeah. my mind <laughs> i just feel like it's gonna explode on the roof the pincer you know what i mean like the, the two teams it, it took a bit and, to and, work and, out and, and, the, and the middle bit like where yeah. the dead on the fight and the explosion and it revert i was just like oh my god like well, my head's hurting but it was so cool I didn't get all of it but yeah it yeah was, uh... yeah i actually when we watched it again the second time i actually wanted to watch this youtube video breakdown of how what happened there and yeah. how they got into i'm not i'm trying not to go into any specifics here if no, anyone hasn't watched it but like for how they end up getting into the gate and stuff like that and and you know what moment that was and, and yeah, yeah, it shows, out, yeah i was trying to work yeah. out how, and it shows how is that time. person on that side of the gate already yeah. like yeah. how did they, like yeah so yeah because that basically happens after the very end bit we see like it's just yeah. it's just a whole thing but yeah i love it i don't think it's i think it's far from Especially watching it the second time now, I had more time to kind of reflect on it. It's far from uh, one of Nolan's best films, no. and it's not. It's not up there with Inception, like for me, or Interstellar, or even like Dark Knight. Or, but there's some things about that I do really love. I I I I, I like the the way how confusing it is, and yeah, it's, it's like the first time you watch Inception. Like when I first watched Inception, I was like, "Whoa, this is like," and now when I watch it, I'm just like. Yeah, 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 this all makes sense to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah but and I'm, I think Tenet are like on enough viewings, we'll get to that point. Um, but I do agree with the dialogues a bit. Like, you can't hear what they're saying, and it's all everyone's talking a bit not natural. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and like you said at the beginning, it just feels like it does rush to the plot a little bit too quick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just straight in on it, doesn't it? It's just oh yeah, like you know. <laughs> This is like, yeah, this is like, Tenet. Like it's just a like, whoa, okay, but um, it's just but no, it's, it's it's still. I just admire Nolan for doing what he wants to. Do. It's like like we said about Jimmy, just does what he wants to do, mm-hmm. and it's so different. Like you know, regardless of what it's going to be, the fact that it's so different and people, um, they take some risks on you know like making a big budget film, but just making it confusing as fuck. Do you think like I think Nolan's a great director visually? especially visually i don't think there's anyone better than him really mm. like like he's a great cinematographer in that sense but um do you think he's almost becoming a parody of himself because every film has to have this 
ridiculous theming throughout it. Because if you think about it, Inception was obviously the dream within mm. the dream. So movement was the yeah. key in that one. And time going slower and faster. Dunkirk, nothing think, was happening yeah, in the I right think he's order. he's just got a thing about... He's just got time. a thing about time. And that's yeah. just his thing. Yeah, like, yeah, like you said, like... Um, <laughs> like you said... Um, Memento, like you know, yeah. the fact that it's it's all backwards, like um, yeah, Interstellar. It's just all about time. That they're, they're, they're themes that years, yeah. yeah, there's just themes that run through all of his work. But yeah, I like that. I like that he. I I was so excited. Like, I I remember reading about this film before he even made Dunkirk. Yeah, it was and already, yeah. yeah, like Nolan's writing this script and it's going to be a mixture of Inse- Inception with like, so I was like, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. I enjoyed Dunkirk. Don't get me wrong. It's great. But I don't want Nolan making a war film. I want him to get into this crazy shit. Oh, this is what I like. like walls. Yeah, like, I want, yeah, I want dreams and, and, yeah. and you know, interstellar travel and stuff. I want some crazy, crazy shit. The more batshit crazy with Nolan and the better I think and I think everyone for some reason it's got it's got cool to hate on just like it's cool to hate on Coldplay Adam yeah. it's got cool to hate on Tenet everyone's just like yeah like it's a good film like, yeah, oh, yeah it's a great film like everyone's just like makes makes fun of it because it's because it is so confusing and yeah like everyone thinks that Nolan's disappearing up his own ass but I don't know I just I think it's it's different uh, hey, yeah like, it is the most the uh, like shitty blockbusters we get most of the time exactly i'd rather watch that and have something that i have to try and work out than sit yeah. there and go explosion explosion hero saves yeah the day. cgi oh like, by the way yeah there's less um less visual effects shots in this film than an average romantic comedy that's crazy that's absolutely you can kind of mental. tell though because yeah 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 like the the quality, i couldn't see any cgi like, yeah. i mean obviously there's like stuff overlay but there's no cgi shots it's just a lot of camera kind of trickery and stuff like that and, and real stunts you know real like and you can see it so cool the one thing the gripe that i have and it's not a gripe it's just it's a gripe with myself i just don't understand how it works yeah like, just, like you know what i mean just don't understand how it works it, entropy that's yeah. all you need to know yeah just, Back, things just like, move backwards that's it I, but, but more, why does it why do you have to just go in anything that revolves? <laughs> like, yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah, understand yeah. it. Like it's just okay. Okay, that yep, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that's that. That's it. But, just just gotta yeah. go with it. Just gotta just, yeah. just go with it. I wonder what he'll do next. I don't know. Just some uh, you know, something the like that. The whole film is spoken backwards and then you have to play <laughs> re- reverse to hear it. <laughs> That'll be the thing. I'd say Inception's uh, probably still uh, away from the trilogy. I'd say Inception's probably his for me his best. Piece. But I really like Interstellar as well. Yeah, that's where I'm. At. I'm like, for me, Inception is just perfect. It's mm-hmm. it's like it's I love it. But Interstellar, goddamn, it comes close for me. Um, and then saying that you know the Dark Knight is just incredible as well. Like those three for me. But yeah. I think Inception and Instella, and I think those two films as well have two of the best scores like in ever in any film. Like just unbelievable, and, unbelievable. And did Hans Zimmer do Interstellar as well? Yeah, yeah. Hans Zimmer like on a, on a, a on a, on a ch- yeah. that whole it was on a church organ yeah. recorded in a bloody like crazy. Yeah, the soundtrack to Interstellar is incredible. I listen to it like yeah, like quite often. I did. I, I forgot. That I saw there. that at the. And and I saw, obviously saw the Dark Knight, um, Inception, and Interstellar all at the BFI IMAX. Oh, and they cool. were just some of the best cinema experiences of my life. I've never been to an IMAX. I really want. I, I really want to go. I don't know why I haven't there, been to the. Like, there's yeah. here, here's all I will say. Yeah. There's a lot of screens in this country that are called IMAX. Yeah. For me, there's only one IMAX, and that's yeah, the Waterloo. BFI in yeah. Waterloo. It's yeah. just on a different level. It's like the the first time I went, the first time I ever went was to see The Dark Knight. And um, that, that must have been in, I'd, I'd seen it already. I think it was like six months later. Like, I saw it again there. And uh, I was just, the first time you go in there, it's just incredible. Because you go, you, you go, um, 
it's not like we're going into a normal screen. No. You walk in, and as you walk into the screen, you're kind of like the screen's like right there in front of you, and then you kind of have to turn around and go up more stairs because no. the 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 screen's almost as like big vertically as it is horizontally, and the the chairs are so steep like on top of each other like you're really like kind of everyone closed in like and yeah when it when it cuts to the actual film like you know like in the dark night when it goes to those imax shots oh yeah like that you know that beginning shot when it goes over the it kind of goes into that zoom into the window in the in that sky yeah you literally like feel like you're there it's like you can't even describe it it's like watching it's like watching cinema in 4k it's just like holy shit like the the aerial shots and stuff like that and then, yeah, obviously, when you got to like, um, uh, like uh, Interstellar, when you know most of it was filmed oh. in IMAX, those scenes were just unbelievable. And the sound, the sound, like you literally, it's so loud. It's oh, yeah. uh, it's just the oh, it's just the best. I think way. you have to watch a Nolan film. I think if you're yeah. gonna go to, I think I'm gonna wait until yeah, because I was gonna go for Tenet, but obviously it came out during yeah like, the pandemic and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I just wanna want to go to it like i I did at city world had the x screen which Mm. um i went to watch bohemian rhapsody there and it was but it was so jarring like yeah it was a normal a bit bigger than Mm. the normal cinema screen you're watching it and but whenever it turned to like a concert performance or something like that yeah the projectors came on on the side and it came up the side of the rows so you were in the crowd yeah, watching yeah. the thing and then it was it, it was really jarring because all of a sudden the room got twice as bright yeah like yeah and it took you out of it and you instead of watching it feel like this you're watching it like yeah 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 it, I, I didn't like it no nah, i don't but, like i don't like all the gimmicky stuff like just no. just give me like yeah i think the imax like the quality it's just the quality of the actual the, the, the screen and how big it is and you really feel like oh and avatar as well we saw avatar there at the bfi in 3D IMAX, and that was just one of the best experiences I've ever had in cinema. It was just unbelievable. And I went and saw it again with someone else, like a, a regular cinema in 3D. Yeah, just wasn't the just same. wasn't the same. Um, yeah, it just crazy, crazy stuff. It's so long ago. I know it is quite a while now that Avatar came out and kind of brought back 3D films, wasn't it? Yeah, was yeah I really are uh, after watching that. I thought this is it, this is the yeah. future, and no other yeah. film. I'd seen other 3D films, but they, no, none of them done it like that. Like it was just, it, it added like a kind of depth to the, yeah. to the film. It wasn't gimmicky. It was just like you felt like you were in there. Like it was so apparently, cool. he's doing something new for Avatar. It's new technology. Yeah, for Avatar. He needs to hurry up with it. <laughs> it's gonna be. I know. It's, it's like by the time the second one comes out, and he's making like two, three, four, and five, isn't he? He's, like made, them, to... he's made two and three together. Yeah. The, yeah. But by the time the second one comes out, the first film is going to be what? Ten. No, but thirteen yeah. years old, maybe. Like, Where is it? You, it's going to be two years. It, you yeah, I don't. I, well, yeah, by like then that. it'll probably be like yeah, fifteen years old. Like, there's going to be kids. Like, there's going to be teenagers watching that film that weren't even born I'm when the born. first one. Comes that's out. ridiculous. That is mental. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I think that's enough uh, film talk. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we are going to get to know you for this episode, Terry. We're going to get to know the nuts and bolts of you. Uh, we're going to start with a really easy question. Yeah, go. Shoot. What is the meaning of life? No. Um, wow. Um, that's a I big one to lay on I me. think we touched on this before, but what is your earliest gaming memory? Um, earliest gaming memory is, yeah, I think probably when I was playing... Um, I don't think I owned a console at this point, but I remember playing Super Mario Brothers on the NES at my my at the time. My best friend who lived across the road from me, he had a NES, and we used to play all kind of games over there, like Mario Brothers, Turtles. Um, I remember there being a McDonald's game. Do you remember that? There was yeah, yeah. There was uh, like uh, oh yeah, like the, the, there was, was it was it like kids McDonald's or like Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. There, there was yeah. like kids on the front, like, and they're jumping, yeah. like, yeah. Um, Games like that, but yeah, it was uh, the one that stands out in my head was Super Mario Brothers playing that uh, for the first time, and yeah, that being my real kind of introduction to like kind of games. That that that's definitely there. Were you? Were, do you think you were hooked at that point? Do you think this is like something that you were really into? Or was it just like, oh, this is okay? And then it was late. I think I was so really... young at that point. Yeah. I must have been. 
I don't even know what I was like, maybe five, like at that point, mm-hmm. five, six. And so I didn't really, when you're that age, you don't really question things. You know, is this always been a thing? Like, is this like, yeah. you know, it's just this, there's this toy, like we're just kind of playing with it. Um, I think the moment for me when I knew, like when I was hooked, see like my first consoles, they blur and I don't know what, what, like I re- clearly remember getting the Game Boy for Christmas and it must have been the year of UK release. So I'd say it's probably 1990. Um, mm. And it was, yeah, the original Grey Brick Game Boy. It came with Tetris. I remember the box. Yeah, the kind of like weird kind of cyber cover on the front. Um, yeah, I remember just playing Tetris like loads. Um, but then also I remember, and I don't know when it was I got it, but it must have been quite close. But I remember getting my Mega Drive. Um, that was my first home console and getting that was mm. Sonic. Um, and that, so that must not have been too long after that. There must have been like around 1991. Um, for me, it was Sonic. It was playing Sonic on the Mega Drive, where I was like, "Okay, this is this is my thing. This is like, mm-hmm. I this is so like I was just hooked on it, and I just knew at that moment, like forward, I was just going to be like always playing, always playing games." Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Like that moment where it just digs its nails into you and it's like no you're there was no now. looking back from that from yeah. that moment in the mega drive there was no looking back it was just like playing every like new game obviously i didn't know it at that point i was probably like what well, what well, was like five six whatever but yeah. um it was just always a staple from that moment was there a period like that you dropped out of gaming at all like where you just were like mm, not really at the moment yeah like that bothered or no, I've never dropped out of actual games itself. The most of the like about I want to say when maybe Harry was born, like that or that year after. Mm. That for a, a few years, that was the least I ever played the games. Like up until like yeah, like up until like a, two years ago, mm. um, that was the least I'd ever really played with stuff. And I, I think a lot of it was down to like the kids being born, and I did. Mm didn't have as much time you don't find no. as much time like i did yeah. like you know because prior to that it would just literally be yeah going yeah. from work would like and i'd just be like gaming till like late and um mm. but i never it was never because oh like i'm bored of them or i'm just not interested in them anymore like, i'd always be every day like there, there hasn't a day gone by where i've not watching something or listening to something about games podcast youtube videos reading games magazines it's just yeah just didn't find those time that time to play them so i say yeah that that kind of period there was like a like a, a three or maybe even four year period that's why i'm doing like there's so much catching up of the the ps4 kind of mm. games like that, that library that that's the of all the get of all the console that's the one i've got the least um play time with you know, because it was just at that time. I mean, I got the PS4 at launch and played like the first year or two of that life. I played everything and then it just kind of stopped. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, yeah, I think it was like from about 2015, 2016 onwards. Um, so, yeah, so I've got some catching up to do there, but that was about it. Yeah, I think the catching up is quite fun though, isn't it? I guess it is. It is. You can kind of pick and choose what you want to play, you know, you, like... I think that's a great way of doing it. It's definitely changed my mindset of how to buy a game because, because prior to that, I was that guy like day one. Buy yeah. It. Day one. I didn't, I, I never really kind of pre-ordered, but I'd be like, if there was a game I wanted and, and it was coming out, I'd, I'd literally just like order it that week. And um, yeah, I, and I'd, I'd always get the new game. And if the new game come out, wherever I was playing, just got put to the side. And then I just moved to the new one and, you know, buying it obviously at like full price and stuff like that. And then, I think doing this has made me and made it a lot more fun to realize that because there's all this stuff I've got to catch up on. And then yeah. I see, Oh, look, and then I see it's on the sale or something like that. And I was like, Oh, God, and I nab it for like nothing. And, and, I've, yeah. and I've got, it makes it a bit more fun and not worrying about, Oh, I, I, I've got past that point now. Like a new game comes out. I don't worry about it. I'm just like, I'll play it when I'm ready to play it. You know, I've got loads yeah. of stuff to play. I, I'm not, I'm not at that point anymore where I'm just like, oh, I've got to like, I've got to play this because it's coming out tomorrow. Like, even more so now than ever. I'm like, no, I will wait because it's going to be a buggy mess. Mm-hmm. I'll wait until oh, yeah, it's no, patched yeah. up and it's cleaned up and there's some DLC and like, you know what I mean. So it's, you can enjoy it in its best state. 
you know yeah definitely like nowadays games just come out and they're a mess for a while and then they get better like you're absolutely yeah. right that way is there a game like let's say money no option uh time no option as well is what game that hasn't come out yet or maybe is, is it even announced yet just a new game in a series or whatever would make you by day one take time off work lock yourself away in your man cave yeah. and be like i'm playing this but what would, would what what game would that be for you I think it's got to be GTA, right? I mean, G- like GTA is always like been, I don't know any of them that have come out and it's not been, that's always a tent pole moment. Mm-hmm. Like you said, like it's always been of either taken, like whenever each one came out since, since like I got GTA three, not long after it came out. Yeah. But Vice City was the first one of like, got it day one. Like literally yeah. my whole world revolved around that. I'm just that's it. I'm just playing that. Same with San Andreas, same with GTA Four, um, and, and, and GTA Five. Like so, every one so far that every time it's been like just I'm just everything is just <laughs> put aside. I'm focusing on this. Obviously, as you get older and in life becomes takes over, you don't get as much like time. I was thinking yeah, about this um, the other day actually. Um, I I was going I was in my car. And I was going through, I've still got a, like a, a wallet of like CDs in there because my yeah. car's got like a CD player in it. And I was just going through my old CDs and in there was the um, the GTA 4 um, like soundtrack thing that came with the special edition. Oh, yeah. And I remember like waiting for that package to come through on that day. Oh. And um, and then like getting that box cover and then whacking that CD in and listening to it and stuff like that. And, and I remember when GTA 4 come out, I clearly remember this. I was, I was at a uh, college. No, I was at college. I think I was at college. No, I wouldn't have been at college. I wouldn't have been at work. Either way, no, I was at work. But I think I took I took time off. Yeah. And I <laughs> for about a week, I can't even remember that it was a really hot week here. Yeah. And um the following week, I think we had like a barbecue over at our house, and I was just like pale. Because I hadn't stepped outside of the house. I literally just closed myself in this room and just absorbed myself in Liberty City for a whole week. I think I pretty finished it. And I just, yeah. Whereas with five, I didn't get that as much experience because I just never had an opportunity to play that much. But but that, trust yeah. me, if it, when GTA 6 comes out, that's, yeah, that's, that's more than any other game I could think. Okay, everything, get day one special edition everything else is put on hold yeah i think like you said when a new graph of Auto game comes out it is a it is a tentpole moment in gaming they've yeah. just become that now then it's like okay gaming changes from today yeah like and it's incredible that a company can do that but they just they just do it like um i think when red dead redemption 2 came out was this, I, I was so excited for Red Dead Redemption 2. I took, like, I think it came out on Friday anyway, so I took the Friday and the Monday off, and I just played and played and played and absolutely yeah. loved that game. I know it was, some people didn't like it, said it was too slow, but um, I loved the realism of it, and I was, yeah, I was just, okay, this will do me, and it was the same with GTA five. There were the two times that I could do it. I was mm. just like, Oh yeah. So I obviously I'm waiting for GTA six. Yeah, of course. Um, and the, and the, first, the, I was like that as well with the first red, red dead. It hit me just at the right time. Like, yeah. and I just absorbed myself in that game. And I was so excited for that game. Um, to hit just at that wrong time for me because I got it. I pre-ordered it and I was like, and I just did not have that, the, the time to get lost in it, that world. Yeah. To the point where I just I just stopped. I was like, no, I can't. I just couldn't enjoy it, like playing it in like small bite size. Uh, like yeah, you'd have been um, a father, but when that came out, wouldn't yeah, you? Oh, so, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the kids were the, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the kids, the kids were were young, and I did didn't have a lot of time at that point to play it, and so yeah, I just kind of stopped. I, I was about four chapters in or something like that, and I just thought I'm gonna get back to this, and it's just I I need to find like. Now I said to you, like, I'm waiting. I think it's got to that point now where I'm just like, I think I'm going to hold out and wait for the next gen version and play it just in the best version it can be. Um, but when I want to play it, I just want to just get lost in that world and just take my time with it. Oh, and it's, yeah. 
I'm the same. I, I have a real urge to play it and to go back through it, but I'm the same. I just want the next gen version of it. I yeah. just want to see yeah. what that can do on the PS5. And I'm, I'm really interested to see what the GTA looks like on the how much they do to that for the because I don't think they'll do much. I don't think it'll look hugely better. No, I mean, uh, it would be the piece like, yeah, but yeah. the PC version, you know, looks incredible. And same with Red Dead, mm-hmm. like they just, they their games just shine so much on um, yeah. when they're, the limits kind of taken off. Like, it's crazy. We just see what they, I know, because I know they were adding some uh, offline stuff to the game. So it'd be interesting to see what they do add. Um, like, I'm sure it'll just be cosmetic stuff, I presume, maybe some radio stations. That's what they normally do. But, um, what's the yeah. what's the what's the best GTA trailer that you remember? GTA trailer, like like oh. the like the, like the unveiling trailer, you know, like the first one, like of all of the of all the different games. GTA GTA Five had a really good one. It was good, like like with Michael doing the voiceover, but it was the second trailer by them that was really good where they just kind of showed how much you could do in that game. Yeah. When they yeah. had them parachuting off their uh, base jumping and the stock exchange and the, I yeah. was like, this is incredible. But Vice Cities was really good. Vice Cities like, was good. Uh, but no, San Andreas for me. Like I think- San really Andreas, the Welcome to the Jungle one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that was- It's a classic. Incredible. Well, what, 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 what one that stands out in my head is GTA 4 one because I remember that first it was like a teaser trailer. It was um I can't remember the music that plays to it. It's like kind of um I remember the GTA 4 one. Yeah, it's like kind of classical theme, and it was just showing the world of Liberty City, and oh, it was like yeah. a, it, no, that was a good one. Yeah, it was like a time lapse, and yeah. it was showing how dynamic lighting moved. Like, and when you think like it was such a big jump. Yeah. Like to go from what we had with San Andreas to that, it was like I remember seeing it and I just couldn't believe my eyes. I remember just being so excited, just being what there's a whole world this this detailed, like a whole city this detailed. Like it just looks insane. They didn't show any characters. Now, or anything like that. Oh, yeah, exactly. it looks bad. It looks yeah. bad now, but, but it's it, yeah, then crazy. Oh. Like it was such a, a big jump forward. Um, yeah, but yeah, the the San Andreas one was amazing. Welcome to Jungle. That was really really good. Mm. That game just hit differently, man. Like that was 90s speaking of timing, yeah. San Andreas. Yeah. That was like perfect, perfect timing. That was when I was in college, and I was just, yeah, I just oh. lost myself in that game completely. Yeah, I, I loved, I loved that game. Um, yeah, I suppose another staying on the gaming theme just for a little bit. Um, what keeps you in gaming now? What's the thing that for you, if you had to say you enjoyed the most about gaming? What would you like? I know that's a hard thing to pinpoint, mm. but what would you say is the thing that you enjoy the most about gaming in general? Whether it's a type of game, whether it's just an experience within gaming, like what keeps you going back? I think I I just like the different how many different types of experiences you can get from games and, and stories. And I, I find that I do tend to I'm very much a, a variety game i don't like to just go down like a, a one or two different kind of genres i like to just try a, a bit of everything and I especially get i'm getting more and more drawn to like indie games as well like as i get older mm-hmm. because they are very different they are they do take a lot of risks they are more contained experiences and a lot of them are, are shorter experiences you can just kind of see one through from beginning to end like either in, a, in, in one playthrough or like you know in a few playthroughs um i don't know i just i just always I've always, I think for, for people like us that have been playing games to the point that we've been playing, I think we've kind of always known like the potential of what they can yeah. do and how they can just fully like surpass like any other uh, medium. And they're like showing that now, like in, in terms of, in, in every way, you know, like um, in, in mm-hmm. like a narrative and, and, um, and just like visuals and things like that. And I just think there's just so, I just, I just love it. And, and I love, I love retro gaming as well because I feel like kind of lucky that we, that, you know, I was born pretty much at the beginning of where this kind of medium kind of started, Mm. like, you know, became big at least. I'm thinking up with the NES and stuff like that. And I think it's just so cool that we kind of have access to that. 
you know what i mean like we it's not like we can just go back and and watch like we can we can't just find easily find copies of like the original like films that were made in in you know the beginning of the 1900s and stuff and i think it's so cool that we I know, even though it's getting harder and harder now like to find stuff but it's so cool that we are still able to find these consoles and cartridges and see where it all began and i love i just love seeing the progression and the history and how things develop through tech and and developers and just everything that goes with it i just, just just think it's really cool that's what keeps no, yeah, me definitely. Back. and i think that's why astrobot hit like mm. a bit differently you know like just seeing that nostalgia of especially playstation like um it was just like oh my god how far we've come from yeah. the little eight megabit eight megabyte cartridge like you know yeah. all the way to- specifically yeah. with um with playstation as well i think that's why i'm, I'm so drawn to playstation because i really feel like that although like my my game start my, my home console game start with the mega drive it was with the playstation which was my next my next console that that really kind of solidified it's like okay this is like you know playing final fantasy 7 metal gear solid like this is what games can actually be this is what the future of games is and just being on that journey since the beginning of that, plat- that, that you know launch playstation with ridge racer and tekken and just i get so much nostalgia like from astrobot like seeing all these things referenced and knowing that i've been there for the entirety of this whole you know this whole this this this, this company's like life and and the legacy and all the games there i love it that to me yeah. to playstation like yeah encompasses everything i love about games and games history and stuff yeah, we both have a soft spot for uh, PlayStation, especially like like you said, we've grown up playing the PlayStation as well as other consoles. And yeah, uh, like I love to mix it up and play lots of different things. But the PlayStation has always been that line yeah. of my gaming like life, really. Um, like I said, I think I started on the Master System, like one of the, uh, this Master System Two, and then mm-hmm. the Mega Drive, and then Sega Saturn. But once I got the PlayStation, I was at that age where I was like, I really want to play this game. I really yeah. want to play this game. Perfect timing yeah. as well. You know, just yeah. that, that right time in your life, it's just made the impression. It just, just got you in. If you could, though, like, if you could change something about gaming, something that you just really don't like, 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 is there anything that instantly comes to mind? That we just, I just really don't like this about gaming in general, gaming industry. Yeah, I mean, well... Um, I mean, the toxic like player base for a start, I mean, oh. it's just terrible. I mean, you can point to any areas of like community online like, that are just terrible, but games have always been known for it. I don't know why, if it's just a thing that's part of that or or what, but yeah, it's just, I hate, I hate, like I saw it today. Um, uh, who was it? Someone that's working on Battlefield 5. I think he's been getting harassed or something. I don't even know what this is about. I don't know if it's the game's delayed or it's not coming out quick enough for people. I just, I can't stand, you know, as I was just explaining, I've just become like pretty patient. Like, you know, I, I really, I mean, no rush. When the game's ready, it's ready. Oh, cool. I'll be, I'll, I'll play it. I can't stand the entitlement that a lot of people have. And if they don't get what they want or they don't like it, you know, from what happened in The Last of Us 2 or, you know, the, the people that like sending death threats to people, like to developers over a, a, a over a game, or like just all that kind of stuff. Yeah, just to, just the entitlement of it, just like where people just think that they just want what they want when they want it. And yeah, I just hate all that and and that part of it. And yeah, I mean, there's there's many there's many things that's not great about the the games industry. Obviously, a lot of stuff that's come out of it more recently, like with um, just the way you know just the way that the industry is it's very it's so big you know like mm-hmm. we've we watched it grow to become the biggest um medium but still like you know you hear like jason schreier has just released this this new book about all the different studios and how they work like they literally work on a game and, and then literally everyone gets laid off and 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 it's just it's not it needs to be sort it out because the film industry doesn't work like this you know what i mean it's, it's just not the same um that, that needs to be sorted out um and yeah and yeah i guess that's just the main thing really i think this is what really puts me off online gaming 
yeah like multiplayer gaming because i just cannot stand the toxic side yeah. of it like and i'll dip in and out of things that, like i played a little bit of a- apex when it first came out because i was interested to see what it was like and it was and that game was pretty harmless because it wasn't really you couldn't really hear anybody yeah. else in the game so that was fine but call of duty and stuff like this oh, I'm just, just like, terrible. Oh, no i don't i'm I remember- interested Back in like the you know like the early 360 days, like mm. it was really exciting when you first started playing. Like because yeah. yeah, the 360 was my first time kind of playing console games online, mm. playing Gears of War, like Halo Three and stuff like that. And but then yeah, it got to a point where I just started just muting the whole the whole. Yeah, lot I do because, that instantly if I'm yeah, doing anything. Yeah, online, yeah. Now it's, yeah, it because it, yeah. it's just it's what you you know what I mean. It's just it's either I don't know. It's just either kids just completely harassing each other or just just it's just not good and um so it makes me realize just how much how you know when you play mmos it is mm. just really positive because that is online you, you just don't think of it as the same but it's yeah. just you, when you're, whenever i've played mmos like warcraft final fantasy you don't get any of that there like I mean, obviously you get the odd case but it's just yeah. everyone's genuinely just really welcoming really positive it's like really fun like but yeah you go to like you say, Call of Duty or, or these kind of like online like um, matchmaking games and just people just abusing each other. And it does make, you, especially as a parent, it does make you like, you just don't, you don't want yeah. your kids to ever like be, and, and you know, that's going to be like the, the, their normality. It's just, it's just what it's going to be. Um, but the, you just think the further I can delay that, <laughs> Oh, them yeah. getting into that you know what i mean <laughs> let's just stick on nintendo and just play mario and stuff like that because yeah. yeah you don't need that you don't need that no all i think yeah, yeah i think you're right i think and it i think once it becomes a competitive game mm. a lot of people turn to just idiots yeah and raging as well play. that's what Rage, i can't yeah. stand as well i just don't have that in me like i want to play I games just, to have fun man. Yeah, exactly oh, if you're if you're at the lose. point where you're like screaming and like throwing your controller over a game then you you got some real issues like you need to maybe take um, a step back and think about what you yeah <laughs> is gaming for you yeah i think like i remember with the last of us part two and obviously the character of abby uh voiced by laura bailey who's probably, in my opinion, one of the best voice actors in the world. I think she's absolutely incredible. Mm. Um, and she was receiving death, for death threats for playing yeah. a character in a game. Yeah. And a lot to the point where people had to st- come out and say that this is unacceptable. The studio, her, hus- her husband, Travis uh, uh, Billingham, who is obviously a voice actor as well, mm. um, and all of the critical role family because she's obviously part of critical role so ashley johnson and everyone who is obviously plays ellie mm. uh, and troy came up and just said that this is unacceptable and kind of like all defended her but she was getting so many death threats like from playing a character in a game and it's like yeah. people need to realize that the character the person playing the character isn't the character and it is a form of entertainment it like it's not life you know, let like just enjoy it for what it is. You're not gonna, you're not gonna start bad mouthing the villain in James Bond. You know, yeah. just it's a film. You understand that, but it's just, I know you get more attached in gaming because you're playing the characters. And but people need to stop gatekeeping and stop like, you know, being so entitled. Like you said, like this is the story that I want. Blah blah blah. Well, don't yeah. play the game then. You know, but, I mean, the and and this is this is not even exclusive to to games like we have it with films like you know like the star wars fan base it's uh, just like it's become hard. so toxic now like, i mean what happened with the the actress that played rose in mm. the last jedi i mean same thing she was getting death threats and shit like that yeah. and it's just like it makes you embarrassed to become fan of anything, like, yeah man. to be to be yeah fan of any of these things because you feel like oh i'm a, i'm i'm gonna be associated with that and uh and yeah, it's the same like with game, but games it just seems to be happening like with everything. Like, you just see it with everything. It's just it's just a shame. Yeah. Moving well, kind of staying on games, I guess, but moving a little, little bit away is I don't think people realize that the room that you're in, you basically designed it all yourself. 
it was like it was it a garage or uh, yeah so this is yeah. A, yeah a garage like yeah converted it and into... you did it all yourself no Obviously, i did i i, I yeah. didn't i didn't do it i didn't do it i knew i wanted done <laughs> i'd had, had people do it but um the all the um the shelving and that i did all that but um yeah. but yeah the actual um the room itself no i had it done we what it was like where we used to live when i was we was living in uh, essex i had i'd done the same thing to my my garage but that was like a detached uh, garage which was right. outside and um i had a, i had that done um but when we moved here i was like yeah i wanted to do something similar but got a bit more room here and stuff like that but yeah this is like and all this stuff is uh, consoles game stuff it's either like my collection i never got rid of any of my games from when no. i was young so like it's either my collection or stuff or stuff a lot yeah. of it i'd say the majority of it though is stuff i've picked up over the years so um yeah so it's like i've just been kind of collecting stuff here and there and yeah so i, I do like to have <laughs> i do like my retro consoles adam was it was there a lot of persuasion that I had to go on to let you have it again or was it was it no no you can have this that's okay yeah it was it was very much a something that when we were buying a house it was very much like look um i, I need i need to have time. yeah like yeah i need to have my 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 gaming room so it was very much kind of on the cards from the beginning kind of made that quite <laughs> so that was cool like and and yeah my wife was a very uh very cool about it actually so um i mean she understands she knew what she was marrying into adam come on yeah so, you, you um, didn't hide any of this. Like, yeah, exactly. Look, look how much of it there is. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I was very open it. about this from the beginning. So, uh, does she dread it when you either like when you go to like a convention or anything like that? Does she dread what you're coming back with? <laughs> but is she like, please, no more? <laughs> yeah. Or she I, just giving up now? Just like, yeah, just do what you want. Yeah, like, just just get what you want. I'm not actually. I'm not that. I don't actually get a lot of stuff. And I'll tell you what, like prices of games these days it's just it's just getting absolutely out of hand like but um a lot of the stuff that i got so i used to work on a, a civic amenity site like um mm -hmm. like a like just like a waste site you know just a like general household uh kind of tip and the amount of stuff that used to come in there would blow your mind um and my thing was always over oh, games and console so whenever stuff come in i'd keep that aside and people used to come in with like like a mega a mega drive and boxes of games um just like at one point and i, I will find photos of these at one point mm -hmm. um because i at one point i was just storing it all i was mm -hmm. just storing it and uh, at one point i i had i've got a photo somewhere i hope i've still got them i had about 20 playstation ones just kind of stacked up <laughs> that's ridiculous um probably about 10 n64s uh like just every, everything mega drives um saturns um just so much stuff um and uh yeah i'd, I'd, I'd test it all and i'd be like ebay and stuff and things like that but so i just kept at least one of each thing some some stuff i've got like a couple but um it was just shocking like and and it was just shocking to see that if i wasn't there to put it aside that would probably just get destroyed and, and lost forever you know like crushed and god knows how many out there around the world just just destroyed so yeah what, what would you say is probably the 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 best thing you found doing that the best thing that came, you came across Ooh, um, for you personally that's a good question that's a good question I can't think of any like standout games. Like, I don't think I've got anything super rare. There's probably some some of the. Um, I don't know actually. It's a good question. Good question. Thank you. I don't know, but then the the NES the NES is definitely not as common, like not here, or, or I think maybe just a lot of them have died over the years. So. I only got. Yeah, they only weren't had... the strongest ones, were they? No. They? So I've only, I've only got one NES. So like that's that's probably that was my favorite find of of the lot of them. Um, it's crazy when I see. Honestly, it kind of makes me a bit sad because I see people talking about like the PS2 now, saying, yeah. "Oh yeah, you know, it's really hard to get out of a PS2." I'm like, what are you talking about? It feels like yesterday that I had these. They were just like 
I, I, cu- I couldn't give them away. I couldn't oh, give yeah. them away. Like if I had one, I could probably sell it for like maybe a tenner, like yeah. five or a tenner. But now like, they, you they, can they, almost get full price for them. Yeah, now it's just, I don't, so I don't know what happened to them all and why people find them so hard to get. Um, yeah, strange. But yeah, um, the com- comics though, obviously not games, but the biggest found I ever had is one of my prized possessions in here, which I've not got them on the proper display yet, but I've got about, I'd say, how many are there? I say there's at least a hundred or hundred at least a hundred comics, Silver Age comics, Marvel no. and DC that came in that I just happened to find which were chucked into the paper bin. And I saw them in there. Like I I was like just kind of sorting through stuff and I see like Wonder Woman or something. Like that. I was like, what the hell is that? So I kind of jumped jumped in and grabbed all this stuff out. And this guy come up was coming upstairs with another box of them. He said, Oh, do you want those? Do you like I've got a couple, I've got another box in my car. And yet, and I, I don't know if they were his or mm. like from a, a kid or if he got them off someone else, but they'd clearly just been that amazing condition. They'd clearly just been left in a loft or something like that. And these are all, and yeah, you bet your ass I bagged them, I boarded them. Yeah. I've got them all in my boxes. And yeah, they're all silver age, like dating from 66 to about 68. And there's like, all kinds of stuff in there justice league avengers batman iron man got like the first um some of the first run first issues of iron man like ever i haven't got that yeah i haven't got like the um first five issues or something something like like from five from five to twenty of Iron Man. That's ridiculous. It's crazy. Have you it's had crazy. any of them graded or anything? I haven't. I haven't. That's one thing I want to do with them. I do. There's a few of them in there that I know are standout ones. Like, because um, mm. with comics, it all comes down to like the character appearances, like whether it's their first appearance, second appearance. And I think it's, um, I think it's Fantastic Four number fifty. I think I've got. That's the only one I, 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 I know that was a really good one, because uh, that's got like the second appearance of the silver surfer in it or something like that you know like so th- there's some good ones in there there's some real good ones in there and they're in good condition as well so that is definitely my prized possession i'm having a look now Are you having a look now <laughs> yeah silver surfer yeah is that at the one? moment yeah 1961 fantastic four number 50 uh it's the first uh showing of the silver surfer the cover price is twelve dollars. Its current value in America is one thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah, that's like that's going to be like mint, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. But there's yeah. one going on eBay at the moment in a sale that is in the UK and it's yeah. not mint, uh, which is going for eight hundred at the moment. So, wow, wow, wow! I remember right. when I looked at that. Well, I, I was just looking through them, and I remember just looking at that one at the time when I was looking. I think for a and average grade of one it was like 50 quid i was, I was like whoa okay <laughs> there's like so yeah it's like there's some there's some value there there's some value there especially if they do obviously it was teased in the marvel thing if they go and do fantastic four yeah that value yeah, definitely yeah, when, yeah uh, they only keep cl- they only keep climbing so up. i don't ever want to get rid of them like i want to i want to you know pass them on to the kids and like let let, let them have them and but yeah, I would do want to have like a proper, proper good comic display and maybe put some of them in frames or something like that because there's some good stuff there. My favorite standout issues of all of them, there's two issues of the Justice League and it's um, the one, and this just sums up Silver Age comics. It's mm. the one where Superman and Flash have a race. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's spread, and they even reference this at the end of the first Justice League. I don't think they, it was in the Snyder Cut. Um, it was at the after the credits. Yeah, where they had the race. They didn't do they? it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's based on this comic, and it's in two part. Like it makes you, uh, re- like they start the race, and then the race doesn't finish until part two. <laughs> and spoilers, they completely cop out, and it's a draw at the end. Oh. They both like cross the line at the same at the same point. It's like, oh come on! But I just love how stupid, and not just that, as they're running, 
all the all the DC, all the other Justice League members are like cheering them on on the lines. And it's like, have you guys got nothing better to do? Is there not someone to be stopping right now? You're just going to watch these guys have a race. But love it. Love that kind of stuff. I was, I went, I was maybe four. My great grandma gave me a book that was in a box and never touched really, which was Winnie the Pooh. Mm. Uh, but it was the first edition of the very first Winnie the Pooh book. Right. And she she got it uh, when she was a child or some age, because she was quite an old woman then. She was about 90 when I got this. So, and I don't know when Winnie the Pooh first appeared, but she got it when she was either a child or whatever. Mm. And that book today is worth around £15,000. Wow. And when I went to uni... Um, my mother, um, who I didn't have a great relationship with anyway, decided to turn my room into something else and binned all of my stuff, basically, and threw away the 10,000, 15,000 now, but 10,000 at the time, uh... pound book that I wasn't keeping for children. I was going to sell, like, like you yeah. know, I was like, I'm yeah. going to wait till I'm like 21, sell this, and set, it'll give me a deposit. You know, Jeez. at that time, and yeah, she she got rid of it. Like, she got like, she basically threw all of my stuff away. Like, because she wanted to clear the room out. I didn't have that much stuff there anyway, because it wasn't where I was living, but it's just where my childhood room was. Mm. And she just threw it all away. Um, and that was one of the things that was there. And I remember um, being told, I was just like, it's a good job I'm in a different a different place in the country right now. Like otherwise, mm. I'd be kicking off. Like that. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. Like but that was probably the most valuable thing I've ever owned, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, never touched it. Never, even when I was that young, I was told, "Don't touch this book." Like oh, and I just kept it on a display, and yeah, it can't believe it. Yeah, I think it's now worth about. Just 15. don't even look. Just don't even. Yeah, and it was in. <laughs> perfect condition like oh, hadn't man. been opened like my great grandma was a collector of books like mm. from her which was from her father and um, owned a bookstore mm. so he used to find all these incredibly rare books and give them to her she sold like she had like um first editions of Huckleberry, Huckleberry Finn and mm. Loads of them. That's how she paid. Like, she made her money. Like, she just sold books. When she wanted to buy a house, like, when she was older, she just sold some books and bought the house in, like, in cash. Because she had mm. a room, a library, basically, just full of these rare books. Like, but she gave me the Winnie the Pooh one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Anyway. Gutting. That's my, that's, that's my story. Um, so we should go back a little bit because we've talked a lot about games. We haven't talked too much about you as mm. a person. You say, obviously, you lived in Essex, but whereabouts in Essex were you from? And did you, were you born in Essex? Or mm. you, so yeah. you were Essex born and bred until you moved, was it what, last year or something like that? Uh, no, tw- 2018. 2018. 2018 moved, yeah. yeah, so I was a, a Basildon boy. Basildon. Yeah, Basildon. But for people who don't know Basildon, maybe some American viewers, describe Basildon. Um, <laughs> um, very, a, a lot of sharp objects and substances. Um, no, I mean, I, I yeah, where, where we used to live. I used to love our, our first house where we lived. And, um, but yeah, the, yeah, I never particularly liked my school, the school that I went to, like my senior school. No, it wasn't great, but you know, it is what it is. But no, it's just um I grew up there and um all my family were in Essex. Um we ended up moving to um Fobbing, which is just like it's just, it's near um like Bazin, but it's like a really nice area, more kind of rural like village and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's where I live, where I live with my parents until um, my wife and I got our first place, which was in Benfleet. So um not not too far like just down the road and, and um and then we ended up moving to thundersley which is between 
uh, Benfleet and Rayleigh. This is obviously very boring for anyone that doesn't know any of these areas. But yeah, then um, we just kind of up and moved um, in 2018 to uh, Framlingham in um, in Suffolk uh, because the kids were really young at that point and we were considering it because we were kind of looking at places and you can get some, you know, you can get a lot for your money like here mm-hmm. compared to Essex. And it's also just, just really just kind of lovely area. We were looking around. We actually were looking around in Norfolk and then... Mm-hmm. And we started looking around in different places in Suffolk and we just kind of found uh, here uh, Fram and we just kind of fell in love with it. And it's just everything we kind of wanted for the kids, like lovely like community and stuff like that. And yeah, we kind of up uprooted and, and planted our new roots here. So, yeah. Does it take a bit of getting used to going from having the hustle and bustle right on your doorstep yeah. to a little bit further away? Yeah, there's definitely some, like my family joke about it, like when they come down and stuff, it's just like... Uh, it, it, it takes some getting used to it's not it's, it's nice though like in a way like you know we, we've joked about on the podcast before like where i used to live i could drive a minute in any direction and i'd be at a mcdonald's or a kfc or a domino's or something like that and here it's like there's just not there's just not here um i'd have to drive well to, um 25 30 minutes to find my first uh kfc and then another another 10 minutes after that to find a mcdonald's like it's just it's just a different world here and there's no 24 hour supermarkets or anything like that no it's like that that was the shock i remember when we first moved here that was like it almost felt like um not claustrophobic i can't think of the word but like the fact that it would be 11 o'clock at night and maybe i want a chocolate bar or maybe i want a drink and i can't get it I'm cut like I'm cut off. Like I can't get it. I physically can't. There's nowhere I can go to go get something. Like wherever you know, back you know, was in Essex. Didn't know didn't matter what time it was, what week, day of the week it was. If you wanted something, you could go somewhere, you can get it. But yeah, not here. You just it's like going back in time. But um now, yeah, you just get used to it. And and the and the just the kind of the pace of everything. It's just everything's just slower. Like you go into the supermarket, you go into the co-op, and everyone's just like chatting as they're scanning stuff through it's just a different world like there's no queues there's no traffic here and it and it's, it only really hits you when you go back mm. like when i've gone back to us it's like oh my god like you realize just how busy it is how built up it is how much traffic there is and and i don't miss that at all <laughs> you know um much prefer this kind of laid back like way of life do you think this is the house you'll stay in for a decent amount of time now or, or have you already got eyes on moving again? No, I mean, we, we, we love this area and um, the house. Um, yeah. I think we're definitely, well, I, I think we'll stay in it until at least like the kids uh, grow older and stuff like that. And, and come on, I've just done this bloody game game. Oh, game. So yeah. like, I, I'm not going to be leaving in time soon, but no, I think, yeah, we, we really like this area and um, I think we're kind of stuck here. So yeah, I think yeah. we, uh, we really like it though. It's lovely. It's lovely here. Yeah, I think when you like we bought this place, but we we're already thinking of of moving. Um, pretty well, like pretty far or, or like in the same. No, place. no, no. Probably um, stay in the same similar area. Yeah, you know, probably go more into the sticks. To be honest, uh, it come, my come, dream come more east. Well, yeah, well, that's what we figured. My dream has always has been. Like there's a program in, in England for the Americans called Grand Designs. Yeah, and I've always wanted to do a barn conversion. Yeah, oh, that that's why I keep uh, saying like to yeah. like that that will be my ultimate house. There's a lot around mm. here. Yeah. I love them. I'd love to do a barn conversion, but make it have that modern inside. Mm. Like, but have the space, have the beams, like big you know, windows. Worry, yeah, the big windows. Like, like you, you obviously you did your, your garage is your internet good in there does it do you have any problems with internet going into a into the garage because it must be thick walls um it's not it's it's not the wi-fi is not great down here it's all right mm. it gets by but i've got the um i had the ethernet cable kind of fed through oh okay to this room so it's all kind of i've got all the ports here so i've got my computer and everything wired in everything mm. i play down here it's all wired up so yeah i wanted to make sure that was all kind of done before i kind of set up in here so yeah because our, our house is quite small uh, mm. even though it's a free bedroom it's a semi-detached new build you know with new builds what some of them mm. can be like um 
So our original plan was to build an outside studio mm. for me, an office. Like, yeah. and then Katie would move into this one because she's her office is currently in the spare room. Um, which one day will probably be a nursery or something mm. if we got on that route. Um, so my plan was to the original plan was to just build one. We looked and it would cost about four grand. Have an outside room built. Yeah. Get it wide up. But my my big issue was with how is the internet going to be? How am I going to get the internet out there? But yeah. you, you'd probably have to run. Yeah. Run so it. at our last house, that was a detached uh, garage and it was just like oh, an yeah, old yeah. garage. So, and and I, that's what I did for there. Yeah. So I had to run. I got like a high speed Ethernet cable and then put some kind of like, um, like a kind of armored it was like it was just like a like a plastic pipe thing that ran along the floor like to the outside mm. from the, from the house it was a bit of a job to get that done because like where i had to run it from that's kind of come into the ground so, and, and and power as well because he didn't have any I had to run mm. proper power from the house so you can get it done it costs a little bit more but then at least if you get it why if you do have an outside thing you get that to the to the room and then you can just get like an ethernet port like spitter so then you yeah. can just be plugging anything in there because yeah, so like you, the Wi-Fi sometimes places that it's just not gonna reach it no, or yeah. even cut it. Yeah, and even though our Wi-Fi is pretty decent, I know as soon as I put it because because where it's near where the cars park, mm. um, and when I'm in the car before I set off, and my internet's already dropping to like one bar yeah. and I'm like oh, my my Wi-Fi so I'm like well I'm obviously going to need to run this properly I'm not going to be able to do mm -hmm. it even with a, 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 a signal boost or anything so that's so I, we talked about it and we thought it's probably easy to stick as it is and then just move yeah you know, save the money wait until the price goes up a bit do some work on the house and just mm. um, sell and go somewhere else before we do the big move to do a uh, a barn conversion but that's you need so much money to do a barn conversion yeah yeah not just to buy the barn like it's the amount of work they're so cool though i love them though oh. yeah i love that's that's that would be my ultimate goal to have no, one of those yeah like to have and to have land with it not like a farm like but to have space you can have a big garden yeah you know, and just which would be a nightmare because I'm terrible at gardening. Like, <laughs> but if you if you can build a barn conversion, you can pay someone to do your garden. I think that, that's my thought process on it. Yeah. But you see, so how many places have you lived with your wife? This is your what, third place. It's our third house. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. How long have you? How long have you two been together? Well, we have since we were seventeen. Wow. College, college sweethearts. So yeah, we actually were joking about this the other day. We have been together now for longer than, than we not. were before yeah before we were yeah not together that's crazy right that's crazy yeah so like that more is... than half of my life like it's it's uh is she insane. like is she a gamer or at all no, or no. totally doesn't doesn't care just, for it just not doesn't bothered. doesn't care for it at all there's like a, been a couple of games like in existence yeah. where she's been into it um but I, uh, I'm trying to think. Even you just give up trying now. <laughs> just give up trying. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, I know. Yeah. Like, there's some stuff that like, she takes a little, like a bit of an interest in, like in in watching. Um, I remember she particularly liked Heavy Rain. <laughs> uh, watching Heavy Rain, great game. Yeah. Um. That, yeah. But other than other than that, there was only one one game that she's ever been able to trump me on, like mm -hmm. completely, and that was um. <laughs> On, I think it was like when the when the iPhone first came out, and obviously you're playing all the different games. Yeah. There was one uh, called Flight Control. Do you know I this one? Flight Control, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. we got really competitive over this, hmm. and she just got hooked on it, like completely hooked on it. And in but in the end, she ended just up destroying me. I could not, I could not get to her score because yeah. she's really good at like multitasking and organizing and stuff like that and she was like really good at that because that's where you have to if anyone doesn't know you, you basically have a, a a landing strip you've got to get and the planes in and the planes out, yeah. come out from different angles and you've got to drag their flight path and then and then land them safely without them crashing into each other and yeah she was just like top top draw on that the other one we used to play a lot was pac-man on uh, pa um uh the 
championship edition on the ps3 and we used to get competitive over that but then in the end she was just eating my dust so i just kind of left her behind i was just you know but that was the only one she can hold against me flight control just uh flight control yeah that was a difficult game i thought i i, I struggled with flight control yeah it was very addictive right. yeah so uh, you've just given up with the... Uh... But yeah, she doesn't... There are some things that we did play a little bit of Overcooked when it first came out. And there are some like co-op stuff I tried to get her into. I think there would be some things I can get her into on the co-op stuff and that. But she's just not... She she just like... She's like a big reader. She loves literature, books, like anything like that. She's like a... What I'm like with my games, she's like with books. Like she's got her office and she's got shelves and books but she's always she's always got she i always joke with her she always got about three books on the go I'm like, how do you even know where you are and like but um yeah so that's her thing and she i think she just sees games as like she just doesn't for her she doesn't get it she's sort of, it was like she's wasting her time but you know well at least now you've got kids like yeah so you can, uh, <laughs> that's it like pass it on to the them gaming on to, spread the gaming on to them yeah but yeah you know i think we've uh We've gone through a lot of your life. I think we'll leave we'll leave some for another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be yeah. continued. Thank you, Terry, for uh, letting us delve in delve into your life a little bit. Thank you. No, it's been it's been it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we go. Uh, don't forget that you have kind of uh, kind of funny that, that I'm, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> Shifty Crowd News Break uh, coming to you on Friday, hosted by Terry, uh, where we'll be breaking down all the biggest gaming news of the week. I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about by then. And uh, yeah, and you can catch this on uh, podcast services. Obviously, you're watching this on YouTube now. You can follow us over on Twitter at, at Crab Shifty. Um, keep an eye out there for what's up and coming. We're obviously getting close to E3. So last week, we did our E3 predictions. Um, if you want to go back and watch that and see what me, Terry, and Vince picked, uh, what we thought was going to happen for E3. Um, and then, yeah, we are getting close to E3 as well, Terry. So that, that's going to be close. ramping up pretty soon. Um, so keep an eye out for what we're going to be doing with that. We've got a few surprises and uh, mm-hmm. we're really excited for that. But as always, thank you, Terry. Yep. Cheers. As always, always lots of fun. Lots of fun to be had. Always fun. And as always, stay shifty. Stay shifty, guys. <laughs>